Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I are having a chat with Manny Pacheco. About movies mm. and movie stars. <laughs> Manny, um, one of my favorite actresses, uh, and I can't remember when I last saw uh, one of her films, but I did see an old rerun of The Big Valley, Barbara Stanwyck. Mm. Oh. And Great the stories about Barbara Stanwyck. Yeah. The reason she's my favorite is not The Big Valley, believe it or not. It's her older films when she, of course, she was a good looking woman all her life, but she was a real babe uh, <laughs> as a younger her. actress. <laughs> and she played so many vulnerable women. Uh, always had a tough side. Yeah. She was a strong woman, but yeah. her characters were also vulnerable, which, yeah. of course, in The Big Valley, yeah, there was no vulnerability, you know. She was a tough old lady. Uh, but tell me about Barbara Stanwyck, because you know some behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. And, you know, when we talk about people like Spencer Tracy or Humphrey Bogart or Peter Laurie and Barbara Strang Stanwyck comes to mind, you know, people kind of get uh, the, their hair on the back of their neck brushes up because they're thinking, well, what's forgotten Hollywood about Barbara Stanwyck? It's not that, that she's forgotten. She's iconic, but some of her films maybe have become forgotten and maybe some personal stories you might not have heard. And that's why we tell these stories. And Barbara Stanwyck, absolutely one of my all time favorites. The bulk and breadth of her career is so complete. It's astonishing to me that she never won an Oscar except for the honorary Oscar that she won later in her career. But she could do it all. And it begins yeah. in the pre-code era. I mean, she was a remarkable find for the pre-code era. And one of the all-time great pre-codes, if not the best of all time, or the best example of pre-code, was her performance in Babyface. That was just, just I mean, to explain it is almost yes. scary. She plays yes. a tart of sorts who is brought up by her father who basically pimps her out. I mean, that's just, that's just awful. Yeah. And, and, and she manages to work her way up a corporate ladder, ladder, literally sleeping her way to the top. One of the individuals, an early John Wayne performance, not in a cowboy hat, but actually in a business suit. And she basically sleeps her way to the top. And it's it's just a remarkable film. And, and that really sets the stage for what I think is going to be a remarkable career. She um, she that's where her tough, tough persona starts with Babyface with, and others. And she was then utilized by, by directors, tough directors like, like William Wellman and Howard Hawks and eventually Billy Wilder. And she just had a slew of comedies, dramas, film noirs. And of course, it then leads to television and great stories along the way. Yeah, yeah. She, I, I agree. She really uh, could do it all. Uh, it's disappointing that she became known in later years only for her toughness. Yeah, and not for that uh, sensitive young girl that uh, appears in many of her earlier movies. Yeah, Stella Dallas is an early entry that really caught the attention of a mm. lot of filmgoers and, of course, the uh, the experts in the field. Right. It's it, it's a tearjerker, and she, I mean, it's a, it's a part that could have been played by Joan Crawford, and she yeah. delivers it so effortlessly, and then she makes a movie that is important to her personal life, and that is Golden Boy which uh, co-stars a very young and up upcoming actor in 1939 named William Holden. And after the making of this film, they develop a lifelong friendship. Uh, when she wins her uh, overall achievement award, uh, she actually, uh, for the Oscars, she actually um, dedicates it to her golden boy, William Holden. She just... She, she, th this friendship is so iconic when they reemerged together in the 50s in executive suite. She was personally asked by William Holden to be in the film. And um, their friendship was so tight. And it's one of those great, great Hollywood friendships that nobody talks about, but they were, they were really fast friends. And then, of course, she married Robert Taylor along the way as, as well. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say that. Um, uh... I know that I've seen a lot of her uh, movies uh, on TV in, when I was much younger, uh, they'd show up. So I was aware of her, but I never paid that much attention to them. But what I did know about her was that she seemed to be one of the people who was owned by the Hollywood system, 
where they told you who to marry and when to divorce and who to be seen with. And uh, one thing that I did learn about her uh, but without knowing much about the movies was that she was born and she, when she was uh, very young, she was orphaned. And she wound up uh, becoming a dance girl or something like that in New York City or someplace like that, and then eventually got found. But she's that typical story of floating around and then getting discovered yeah. somewhere along the line. True, true Hollywood story. And, and, you know, she could do comedy, too. I mean, in the in the early 40s, she made a string of of those really kind of wisecracking uh, uh, movies. I mean, I guess... I guess uh, they were very screwball in, in, in its sense. Uh, she did The Lady Eve with Henry Fonda, and she was just magnificent as, yeah. uh, as, um, as a, a dancer. Let's just use the euphemism as a dancer on, on stage for Ball of Fire with Gary Cooper and Dana Andrews. And she, her name in, as a character is just remarkable. She plays... Sugar Lips O'Shea. <laughs> and she refers to kissing as yum yum. And it's just, it's one of those wacky screwballs that Howard Hawks created. And, and she's just delightful in this film. And, and of course, an Oscar nomination came, but she didn't win. She's just, she's just great. Hmm. How did, uh, how did her career end? Do you know, Manny? Well, during the 40s, she was solid in, in, a, in a string of noirs. I mean, she she did, of course, um, a double indemnity with Billy Wilder, you know, the, his production, starring Fred, co-starring Fred McMurray. And she also did uh, The Strange Loves of Martha Ivers with Van Heflin and Lisbeth Scott. Uh, and, and the first film ever made by Kirk Douglas. And, of course, she did Sorry, Wrong Number, which is another tour de force uh, noir. Yeah. So, I mean, she she made a lot of films in the 40s and 50s. She ended up in television, as totally you know. Uh, and, and she just kept working. I mean, she really worked almost till the day she died. She um, she was a real student of cinema. And she was, she, just like she mentored William Holden, she mentored many, many actors along the way. And, and late in her career, she had uh, worked with the University of, of Wyoming, of all places, Apparently, she had a, a very close tie with the University of Wyoming, and uh, she sent a letter to the University of Wyoming, and I have access to that letter, and if you allow me, talk about a real forgotten Hollywood moment. Let me read what she wrote, and this is all you need to know about Barbara Stanwyck late in her life. It's dated 1986, so this is prior to her death in, in a couple of years, but it, it's to the student writers and film historians at the University of Wyoming, and it says... Here are the 24 scripts of the nighttime soap, The Colbys. The character I played was Constant Colby Patterson. I quit the show after the first season. It seemed to be saying the same things week after week. The only way people could see any difference in performance was the fact that I had a different dress on. At least that's the way I felt. Uh, Constance wasn't going any place, but I was. I quit. I have no wish to denigrate any writers, but pay attention to this dialogue and construction, and I do believe you will learn. Noel Coward, it isn't. There are <laughs> 80, I know, there are 80 some odd film scripts that I have previously sent to the university. Please refresh your memories and reread a few, such as Double Indemnity, Ball of Fire, Stella Dallas, The Lady Eve, Remember the Night, and Sorry, Wrong Number. Just because it is known as a soap does not mean it has to be poor writing. If it's still film, it should entertain. There's an old saying in our business, if it ain't on paper, it ain't on the screen. Dialogue is the foundation. So dear students, be kind to us poor actors. Good dialogue, go. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> great letter, just a great That's letter. great. Yeah. So that's really all you need to know about Barbara Stanwyck. She loved her craft. She respected her craft. Exactly. And she was willing to pay it forward. Great. Well, thank you, Manny. My pleasure. It's been my pleasure to present Barbara Stanwyck. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, 
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.